fellow Diamond Painting Addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today with a stash video. So I know that it looks like I'm going to be working on stuff, and I am, but this is going to be a little bit different of a stash video because I have basically all of my diamond paintings, pretty much most of them anyway, all packed away in preparation for getting our house on the market, selling, moving, all that good stuff. So rather than unpacking everything and piling it onto my dining room table like I normally do, what I'm gonna be doing this time is just basically flashing pictures up on screen of what all paintings I have and how many of each. So I hope it will be just as interesting rather than looking at boxes and a big pile of boxes, you'll be able to actually see hopefully all the artwork. I do have some new things that you guys haven't seen before. Of course, I finished some things and I'm gonna be talking about a little bit about my goals and what I wanna do with my stash moving forward. So all that being said, I'm gonna work on my little mini kit here while I start flashing things up on the screen. So let's get started. All right, so just jumping in, I wanna talk about ones that <laughs> are not, well, that are out and not in a box. So that is my two heaven and earth designs. And I have a Elena Lazareva one, which is a mermaid one. I have the drills picked out for that because I'm gonna be using my spares, but I haven't actually laid a drill on it yet. And then the second canvas that I have unboxed is called Lackadaisy Perennial, and it's this cute little flapper girl. I don't have the drills for her yet. I don't know if I'm gonna do her from spares, but I bought those two canvases at the same time I bought my Pegasus Heaven and Earth design, which I finished, but they all came in the same tube, so those were out, so I say they're unboxed. They're boxed up now for the move, but they were just out hanging. And then as far as other whips go, I have one Craft Pack Canada, and that is the temperature diamond painting that I'm doing. I think I'm caught up through May, I need to do June, and I think I'm gonna wait until the end of July and just do June and July at the same time, and then hopefully I'll be packing that up while we make our move, and then the rest of that will get done with Canadian temperatures, but we'll see. I have another whip uh, from Mary's Diamonds, and that is my Zero Two. She has been hanging for quite some time. I just, every time I get her out, the drills are not great, and I just, keep putting her off so she is not done and then I have one whip which is my last crafties which was the jinx that I opened from them so those are the open canvases essentially that I have that are either open or basically whips so if you're keeping track that is two heaven and earth one Mary's one crafties and one craft pack Canada so that puts me at a total of five so far. Then let me kind of start with what I call my one-offs and those are just basically stores that I have one diamond painting from or possibly two, but not very many. Some of these are gonna be new. I was kind of hanging on to them as maybe surprises, but I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about everything that's in the stash. I ordered one from the Mermaid Cavern, I had heard good things about them. So I have one canvas from them, which is a Halloween themed one called De Los Muertos. I also wanted to try out Bella Safina. So I have one from Bella Safina called Bubblegum Girl. It looks really interesting. It's nice and colorful. I'm curious to see how that one compares to other companies. I've not ordered from Bella Safina before, so I'll be interested to see how that one turns out. I still have one Make Market. Make Market is the kind of store brand of Michaels for their diamond paintings. Last time I was in my local Michaels store, they don't really carry any diamond paintings anymore but the Make Market. I think Joann's is still carrying both Diamond Dots and some Diamond Art Club, but I don't think at least my, my, my local Michaels is not carrying anything but the Make Market anymore. So I have one of those. It's kind of a big one. I did a smaller one of dolphins from them and the quality was good. I just haven't gotten around to this one yet. And that one is a picture of the Colosseum in Rome. Then <laughs> I have several companies that I have two kits from. 
and that is Jada Gym Shop. I have two kits from her. One is a Jasmine Beckett Griffith. That is one of the Dice Fairies. And then my other one is kind of like a tarot thing. It's called Owen and Aurora. It looks really awesome. I can't wait to get it out and actually work on it, but it's big. And so that one I've kind of been putting off as well. I have two from Distracted by Diamonds. I've done a Distracted by Diamonds before. It was, I think, called Light, L-I-T-E. Really loved it. I thought it was really good quality. And so I bought a couple more from her. So I have one called Oasis, which is this really interesting portrait of a woman. And then I have another one called Halloween Girl, which is one that I saw, I think, Life with Lindsay do. And it just was super cute. So I have that in my stash as well. And then for another new to me company, I actually went out and bought two kits from Francesca's Studio Works. And I got one called Conversation, which is a Halloween one. It's a little witch sitting on a pumpkin, super cute. And then I got another one called Snowman and Child. And it looks really cute as well. I've done another kit by that same artist that did the Snowman and Child. So I got both of those. I've heard good things about Francesca's as well. So I wanted to try both of those out and see how those went. If we look at my one-offs, that's one Make Market, one Bella Safina, one The Mermaid Cavern. So that's three. And then companies that I have two from are Jaded Gem Shop, Distracted by Diamonds, and Francesca's. So that is six. So I'm at a total of 14 so far. Then I have Diamond Painting Shop. These have been hanging around in my stash forever and I really, really would like to get to them. I just, they're all big, so I haven't yet. Two of them are mukas, and you know how I feel about mukha. You saw me complete the one called Summer. I also have the one from his season series called Spring. So at some point I'll get around to that. And then the other one is a mukha called Zodiac. And it's been done at Diamond Painting Shop. I've seen it at Diamond Art Club. And I think there was one other store that had it as well. But it's a really interesting kit so I want to get that and then the third one that I have is a Tiro Marchetti and it is called Sleepy Time and it's super cute and I would really love to get to it someday. I'm slowly working my way through older kits though so maybe that one will come up on my radar sooner rather than later we'll see. So that is three from Diamond Painting Shop and then I have four more from a store that kind of makes me sad because they're not around anymore. And that is Craftably. And Craftably finally closed their website. I guess they finally sold out of stock. I still have a few kits from them and I absolutely am gonna hang on to them and do them. The first one is a Dakota Detweiler called Angel of Justice. I haven't opened it. I don't even know whether it's round or square, but it looks amazing and Another one that I can't wait to do, but also big. I just apparently am drawn to big canvases. I have another one from them that I bought called Midnight Warrior. That is one that I bought when they were having their trying not to go out of business sale. Unfortunately for them, it didn't work. I really hope, I don't know if it's in the cards for them to come back into the diamond painting business, but I really liked the quality of their kits. And that's why I'm hanging on to the ones that I have. And then the last two that I have from Craftably are ones that I bought in their kind of final going out of business sale. And that is the gnomes in a snowy forest that I had been after forever and was waiting and waiting, thinking that they were going to get new releases. They got a few, but not very many. The other new release that I snagged at that point was one called Blue Swallowtail. And it's just butterflies and flowers, but it was nice and colorful. There were a couple of other ones that I wanted, but they got sold out before I got those. So, so those are my four craftables that I have left. And like I said, definitely hanging on to those because absolutely I want to do those. So four craftably, three diamond painting shop, that's seven more. That brings my total to 21 if I'm counting correctly. <laughs> and then these last four are going to be kind of the, my big four, the ones that I have the most of. So Dreamer Designs. I have nine Dreamer Designs kits. 
Some of them I don't know if I'm gonna hang on to. You've seen a couple of them in my stay or go videos. The first one is called Autumn Sun. I'm definitely keeping that one. I love the color scheme of it. It's a round, so that one is definitely staying. The second Dreamer Designs is called Beautiful Blossoms. This is actually one that I bought not too long ago. I just absolutely love the colors in it. And I think Dreamer Designs does a really good job of rendering flowers and landscapes. So definitely gonna hang on to that one. I have a couple of kind of holiday themed ones. Well, actually, I guess I have several holiday themed ones. So the first one is called Gingerbread Lighthouse. And this one is a gingerbread lighthouse, as the name implies. This is a Christmas one. I bought this one quite a while ago. It is also round. It's on my list to maybe get to this year for Christmas, but we'll see. It also is quite large, so I don't know. Then I have one called Snowman. I think Snowman and Presents is the name of it. And it's a smaller one, so I'm hoping to get to that one sooner rather than later. It's a newer kit. I believe it's square. And I've been hesitant to do some of my larger Dreamer designs that are squares because the last square that I did from them was not a great experience. So I'm thinking if I do the smaller one just to kind of see how it goes. I've heard that their version two kits, the squares have improved, so we'll see how that goes. Then for two more kind of holiday ones, they're both gnomes. One is called Halloween Gnome, and I got it at the same time <laughs> as the other gnome one. I don't, I don't remember if it was a sale, but I got the Halloween gnome with the little cat and the pumpkin. And then the other one I bought specifically for DP for veterans. I don't know if this is the kit that I'm gonna do this year or if I'm gonna do a bigger kit from another company, or maybe I'll have time to do both. I don't know, that depends on when our move happens and all that stuff, but it's called USA gnome and it's like a Christmas gnome, but he's all decked out in patriotic stuff. So I thought that would be a good kit for DP for veterans, especially since it's in November, so Christmas is coming up and it would be right there. And then my last kind of holiday themed one from Dreamer Designs is called Ye Old Christmas Shop. And this is big, haven't opened it yet, it is square, but it's another one of those that I love because it's all these little vignettes, it's all these little pieces of Christmas and toys and the windows and all that kind of stuff, and so I thought that one would be really fun. The last two that I have from Dreamer Designs, one you've seen in a Stay or Go video, and that is one called Tarot Town. I still haven't made up my mind whether or not I'm gonna keep it or get rid of it. For now, I'm gonna keep it. It's gonna make the move with us. Whether I keep it once we move, I don't know. I'll just have to decide once we move. And then my last Dreamer Designs is, I think, another Chiro Marchetti, and it is called Sweet Dreams Candy Store. It may not be a Chiro Marchetti, I'll double check that. If it's not, I'll throw it up on the screen who it is. Maybe I'm confusing this one with Christmas Shop and that one's his, I don't remember. Anyway, Sweet Dreams Candy Store is another one of those with all the little vignettes. Just such nostalgia looking at all of this candy in the candy shop. So that is my nine Dreamer designs. So if you're keeping track, that puts me at 30 kits. <laughs> so next up, Bella Art Diamonds. Bella Art Diamonds used to have a separate website. They took over Mary's Diamonds. They've now combined it all so that it's all kind of at Bella Art Dana Cole now. So in case you weren't aware of that, that's where it is. I've done some sneak peeks for them. I've bought kits from them. I don't know if they're gonna have any more new releases before we move, but I'm excited about some of the artists they've been sharing that they've signed to them. So it'll be interesting to see what they have. Bella Art Diamonds, I have 13 kits from them. So what are they? I have two little kind of, well, I guess three, three little kind of teacup canvases. One is called A Sip of Sunshine and it's like a little teacup. It's got a sun on it and this really cute butterfly. These kits are smaller. That's what really attracted me to them because I've been working on such large canvases. Anytime I see a small one that kind of is like, hmm, I'm like I should get that one. So I have a small one that I can work on that can be a small win while I work on all these very large canvases. So I have that one, and then I have another one called Aquarius Teacup because I am an Aquarius, so I really wanted to get that one. And then the third one is called Yarn Crafter's Delight, and it's like this teacup, but it's full of yarn instead of liquid. And I just thought it was really cute. I love all different kinds of crafts. 
diamond painting most of all, but I do like all different kinds of crafts. I have done all kinds of different things, including needlepoint and cross stitch, embroidery, cruel painting, fabric painting, crochet. I've tried my hand at knitting. I've, I've tried lots of things. So that one was appealing for that reason. Then I have a lot of like portrait ones. I have one called blue and I am not normally a kind of monochromatic person. The one, the arcs where it's all kind of shades of one color or just black and white or grayscale generally are not appealing to me, but I really thought this one was cute. So I have this one. Cute is also the reason for the next one, which is called Bubble Girl. And it's this cute little girl with little bubbles all around her and a little octopus sitting on her shoulder. And I just thought she was adorable. I have one called Kitty. And this is a little kind of like anime girl with a backpack. Very much my daughter's style of art. It's really funny to me. Bella Art Diamonds has a lot of artists that I think are kind of the same art style that my daughter draws as well as art that she's drawn to. I don't know if that's how I've ended up with so many of theirs. But I have that one called Kitty. And then I have another one called Little Witch. Little Witch in the Sunrise, I think is the name. It's just this cute little witch looking out a window. I love how the wood kind of frames her little face. And the window and the, the stuff reflected in the window is kind of blurred. So she's really the focus. I think that one is really cute. I have another Bella Art Diamond called Moon Earring. And this one, again, is another portrait, but I just love how her hair kind of fades into this night sky with the moon. I think that one will be really fun to work on. There is some color blocking, but I hope not enough that it's going to be something I don't enjoy. I don't mind a bit of color blocking, but I much prefer having confetti to work on. The next one I think will have enough confetti for me and this one is called Pet Shop and I just thought this one was again super cute. They have a lot of that kind of anime style art. Pets as you know are a thing for me and so I got that one. The next one from Bella Art Diamonds is called Pink Cockies and this is two little pink cockatiels. This one just appealed to me because of the color scheme. Not normally a big bird fan but I really like the color scheme of this one and it looked really interesting, so I picked that one up. I have another one called Snow Girl and it is just this cute little girl. She's got an umbrella out in the weather in the snow. Lots of purple in this one. Again, not necessarily a fan of everything being monochromatic, but there's pink and other colors in there as well, so I think that one will be fine for me. The next one is called Waiting for the Holiday and I saw this one and just fell in love with her little face and her hair. I don't really know why. Again, I'm not usually a big portrait person, but I seem to have accumulated quite a few portraits from Bella Art Diamonds. So love her little face and her purple hair, purple pink hair. Just think it's really cute. The last Bella Art Diamonds I have is called Witch and Magic Book. And I actually think I just saw this as a new release from Diamond Art Club. But I'm glad I got the one from Bella Art Diamonds because the one from Bella Art Diamonds has a lot of glow in the dark drills on it. So like all of the little butterflies around her are glow in the dark and I think it will look really cute when it's finished. So yeah, glad, glad that I picked that one up. So those are my 13 Bella Art Diamonds. So if I add 13 to my total, that brings me up to 43. So what's left? Oraloa and Diamond Art Club. So let's start with Oraloa. Oraloa, I have lots of kits from. I really like Oraloa's kits. I like their squares and I like their rounds. I've done several squares of theirs. They've all been great. So I don't have any concerns about their squares. The first two are the ones that my husband picked out for me. The first one is called Autumn Queen and it is kind of a darker autumn themed one. It's a portrait one. Don't know when I'll get to her. She looks really interesting. Lots of little vignette pieces around her as well, but I don't know when I'll get to her and she's square. And then the second one he picked out is called Sweet Unicorn and it is a bayonet. I have several by bayonet. I love her art style. Not sure when I'll get to that one. It is also a square. So I think I'm just prioritizing rounds at this point because I've done a lot of squares so far. A lot of my older kits have ended up being squares. Maybe I just need to pay more attention to that in the future, I don't know. Then some other Oraloas that I have, I have a smaller one called Transformation. I actually 
would like to get to this one sooner rather than later. It's not as big and I think it would go pretty quickly just from the art style. Haven't got there yet. Got a few things I want to get off my plate before I get to that one. I have another Oraloa called Conquest. This one is one that I kind of bought on an impulse buy. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this one yet. If I'm going to finish it, if I'm going to give it away to someone, I don't know. Then I have a couple of more kind of darker ones. And I mean darker in color. One called The Future, which is kind of a steampunk one. It's the little kind of steampunk woman with the robot. A lot of dark browns, browns, coppers. So I, that's why I've been putting that one off. The darker colors are kind of hard for my old eyeballs. <laughs> and then I have another one called The Legend, which is again, a lot of browns. There's some reds and some lighter tans and things in this one but just haven't gotten to that one yet. I have another bayonet called Totem Lacorn, which is another kind of rainbow peg corn that she's holding. I don't know if it's a unicorn or I think it has wings, I can't remember. It'll show in the picture. I'm looking off a list while I'm reading this to you, so I'm not looking at the photo. So these are all just from my memory. So if the photo's somewhat different, that's why, because <laughs> my memory isn't what it used to be. So Totem Lacorn by Vayonette, cute little girl. Eventually I'll get to that one. I have one called Camilla, which is a cute little mermaid. Maybe next year during Mermaids and Magic or Mermaid or one of those events, I'll get around to doing her. I have one from Orloa called Just You. And this is one that I bought because again, it's that vignette, there's a window. She's got all these little things around her, crafting supplies and things that she's working on on her desk and that just looked really appealing. I have one called Hibiscus. Hibiscus is actually on my list of want to do and I'm actually hopeful that maybe after I get done with Belly Dancer that will be the one that I work on next. I don't know that for sure but that's kind of in the back of my mind. Then I have three Orloas which you guys have seen before and those are the ones that are in my kind of what I term travel series. I have the one that is Paris, which is the couple in front of the Eiffel Tower on the river um, with this kind of summery landscape. I've got one that is uh, New York, which is the, the couple, I think the same couple, standing in front of the Statue of Liberty and kind of the New York skyline, which is more springy. And then the third one is the one in London, which is just the woman sitting out in front of the river with Big Ben in the background and kind of these fall autumn leaves everywhere. I have been watching their new releases. This artist has released some other new things, but they've all been cities in the US. I think there's one in, they did one that was Hawaii. They did one that was San Francisco. And I wanna say there was another one, but I may be misremembering that. But I'm hopeful there'll be, I'd like a fourth one, a winter one. So Oraloa, if you're listening, the artist, if you're listening, if you could make a winter themed one, that would be awesome because I would like to hang it up in a series and do all of those, but we'll see what happens. And then my last Oraloa is one called Promenade Bucolique. I just love the color scheme in this one. I love the flowers. I love the color scheme. Again, I'm not usually a portrait person. I say that I'm not usually a portrait person and it, feel, it feels like all I've done is talk about portrait kits that I have. But this one, the color scheme was the most appealing to me. This, I actually like this artist a lot. She's got a couple of other kits that I might get at some point as well, but that one was my favorite as far as color scheme and color palette. All right, if you've been taking notes and paying attention to the numbers, that's 14 Oraloa added to my previous total. That brings me to 57. So what is left in my stash? All of my diamond art clubs, and there's a lot. I think I'll start with all of the Spanglers because those are probably the ones I've had the longest. So the first Spangler is called The Literate Dragon. And as an English teacher, lover of reading, lover of books, I had to have that one. The dragon surrounded by books, that was just a, a no brainer for me. I have a Spangler called Sunday Delight because who doesn't love ice cream? I certainly do. So little dragons eating ice cream, banana split, all that kind of stuff, that sounded cute. So I have that one. I have another Spangler called Customized Bookshelf. 
I have lots of plans to do things with the spines of those books and put like names. I don't know if I'm gonna put author's names, titles, or if I'm gonna put like names of my family. I don't know, but I'm gonna do something with that one. So that's the Spangler that I have. And then the last Spangler that I have is called Afternoon Tea. So only have four Spanglers left? I think that's right. Afternoon Tea is just this cute little dragon in front of or behind a little teacup and working on that. So there are the Spanglers. Then what else do I have? Oh, one more. I have five. One more called Treasure Quest. And again, it's a pile of books and they're reading, but they're like in little costumes, pirate costumes and everything. And it just looked really cute. I can't resist a cute dragon. I love dragons. They're not for everyone. I understand that, but I liked it. All right, what else have I got? I've got one called Wilhelmina's Nook. Again, this is a bigger one. And this is one that I got, again, for the little vignettes. There's all this stuff going on in the window, behind her, around her, the cute little corgi. So that one was appealing for that reason. Same thing with Sunnyside Antiques. This is, again, another one of those that had all these cute little things that I can make into little mini sections that I can work on. It's this window of an antique store and it just looked really cute. I'm, I'm drawn to those because I have the toy store and the Christmas one from Dreamer Designs and I have the Sunnyside Antiques from Diamond Art Club. I also have one called Sunken Ship from Diamond Art Club. That is one that came in their very first mystery box that they sent out. I do also have from that same mystery box an actual mystery kit that is supposed to be dragons. That is one of the reasons I've hung on to it. When I very first started diamond painting, I did several mystery kits. I've kind of gotten away from them, but maybe I need to move that one up on my list because it is dragons and it's a mystery, so that would be fun. I haven't seen anybody really do a ton of mystery kits lately, so that might be fun. I also have one Josephine Wall left, and that is my Diamond Art Club Spirit of Flight. I got that one. This is one for me. I haven't decided. I like Josephine Wall, but I have really enjoyed the two Diamond Painting Deutschlands that I've done. I'm not sure how it will compare to do one of hers from Diamond Art Club. I know it's gotten rave reviews. I know lots of people like it. Just for me, I don't know. We'll see. For now, I'm hanging on to it, but I don't know. Then I have one that you guys saw. It was actually, I think, my first Stay or Go video, and that's called Notre Dame Night. And you guys convinced me to keep it because of the kind of memories of my mom and it was one of her, Paris was one of her bucket list places to visit. Luckily she got to go there before she passed away. So I decided to keep that one. I have one called Patriotic Camper. I actually bought that one to give away as a gift for DP for Veterans last year. And I ended up giving up, giving away some other kits that I got from some sponsors. So that one is still in my stash. So that might be one that I work on for DP for Veterans, I don't know. I'm kind of partial to the gnome, so I might do that one instead, but this is a possibility. I have one from Diamond Art Club called Phoenix. I love phoenixes. I love all kinds of mythical animals, dragons, phoenixes, unicorns, that kind of stuff. So that one was really appealing. I don't know whether this one will be too much, again, kind of monochromatic for me. I felt like when I bought it, it had enough colors that it wouldn't be, but it's kind of sat in my stash for a while, so we'll see. I have another one called Shaman from Diamond Art Club. This is one that I bought to do for DP for Pets. This one and Wolf Shaman, I think I bought kind of around the same time. Wolf Shaman, I finally got around to. Absolutely loved how that canvas turned out. I think this one will be really good. I just, for whatever reason, again, it kind of keeps getting shoved to the back of the pile. I don't even know if that one is square or round. So I don't know if that's part of the reason or if it's the size, could be both, I don't know. A couple of newer purchases for me were one called Rainbow Dragon. This one is a cute little dragon. It's by Dragons and Beasties, and I've actually done a dragon of hers before, the Fiona Butterfly Dragon, and I really, really enjoyed it. And this one looks to have more color in it because it's rainbow. So I have this one. And then at the same time, I bought one called Naoko, which is just this cute little fairy girl with kind of iridescent fairy wings that look like it would be really fun. So I have that one. I also have, this is also one that you guys saw in a stay or go video, and that is the little helpers, which is the dragons 
helping to decorate for uh, Yule, the Christmas tree and everything. It's very dark and like I said, all the dark colors are hard on my eyes, but lots of people told me in the Stay or Go video that it looked really awesome while when it was finished. So haven't made up my mind for now. Ones that I haven't made up my mind are gonna end up going across the border with us because why not? I already have them, I might as well hang on to them and then we'll see. I have another one called Love Your Inner Child. Someone actually did this one for DP for Pets and it looked amazing. So this may be one I need to kind of move up on my list as well. And it's just this cute little dragon. Again, got a thing for dragons. The next one is one that I kind of bought for my husband because it is the Lucky Money Cat. And I don't know how to pronounce the name, but it's the Lucky Money Cat. It's a Jeremiah Kettner. I've seen a lot of his art and this is the one that I thought would be fun to do for my husband. So this one I got for him. I do have one whip currently for Diamond Art Club and that is my Jasper Seed that I'm working on. I'm almost done with that one. So hopefully that will be a finish that I can show you guys soon. And then after I get done with Jasper C, the next one that I'm gonna be working on is my Belly Dancer. And you guys saw me unbox that one and kit it up. My extra drills that I ordered have arrived, so now I can figure out exactly what I wanna do. I've pulled several ABs that I'm gonna be putting into Belly Dancer, so that one should be a lot of fun. I have a couple of, these actually ended up being kind of the same, even though I bought them at different times. I have one called Desert Bloom and it is a landscape orientation and it's this kind of desert landscape with all these desert succulents and flowers and things like that. And I just really like the color scheme of it. I thought it was nice and bright. I also don't buy a lot of kind of floral landscapey kits and I always see other people doing them and think, oh, I should have got that one. So when I saw that one, I was like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get that one. And then I think just a couple of weeks later, this next one came out, which is Desert Bloom Dreamcatcher. I am a sucker for Dreamcatcher stuff. And I saw this one and I was like, oh, I should get that one. I actually bought it with my daughter in mind. I may give it to her once it's done, I don't know. But I like Dreamcatchers too, so if I end up keeping it, no, no big deal. But the, kind of the same kind of flowers and succulents and everything, Desert Bloom, I probably should have caught on that it was probably by the same artist, but I didn't for whatever reason. All right, then I have another dragon kit, which is called Dragon Attack. This one is another landscape one, kind of dark, big, so that's why it's kind of got shoved to the back of the pile. Some of these are just big, and again, my own fault because I am notorious, and I still don't, even though I should, look at what sizes things are and whether or not they're round or square. I'm getting better about that, but I still don't do it as much as I should. So I have that dragon one. Then I have one called Kindred Spirits. I absolutely love this one and I am not a cat fan. I am allergic to cats, <laughs> never had a cat, never gonna have a cat. But this one for some reason, just the color scheme, the composition of it, just really love it. So this is on my want to do series. Hopefully, eventually I will get to that. I have one called Benedict Blue. This is one that I bought last year actually while we were in Canada absolutely love how it kind of looks like an old quilt and I've seen a cut I think I saw a new release not too long ago that's kind of the same sort of design not exactly but same sort of kind kind of quilt feel symmetrical feel absolutely love paintings like that I didn't get the second one because I still have Benedict Blue but if when I get around to finishing Benedict Blue may go back and look for that other one then I have a couple of Christmas ones I have one called Christmas Bunny and someone completed this one for DP for Pets too. So I've seen it completed. It looks amazing. I hesitated buying it because it was a lot of dark colors, but it's just so cute. It's a lot of black, which is not normally my favorite thing, but there was a lot, I really like the red and the silver in it. And so I just thought, no, I'm gonna go ahead and get that one. So I have that one. And then this other one is not really a traditional kind of Christmas one, but I just fell in love with it and it is called Christmas Shells, and it is all these shells arranged on the beach with the waves kind of coming in to look like a Christmas tree with a little starfish at the top for the star and everything, and I just thought it was a really interesting design. It looked like it would be really fun to do, so I have that one. Then, <laughs> there's a lot. I told you there was a lot. I have one called Aerial Angel. I love this canvas. Again, it's a lot of dark colors, which is why it's kind of gotten pushed to the back of the pile. But 
it's not one that I'm gonna let go of. I love the composition of it. I love her wings. I am not thrilled with the dark background, but it's purple rather than black. So hopefully that will be enough to make it easier for me to do. Even if I've got to break it up into chunks to do it, I'm gonna do it. All right, just have a couple more. So I've got one called Close Encounters. This is one that I bought again for the color palette of it. This artist has done several other kits for Diamond Art Club and they all kind of have the same color palette. So must just be kind of the colors they like working in, but the alien with the girl and her purple kind of lilac hair and all the alien landscape colors just looked really fun. So I have that one. These last three, oh, I guess I should count this one as a whip and that's the mini dazzles that I bought, the diner food dazzles, because I've unboxed that so you, well, duh, it was in the beginning of this video. So you guys know that I have that one. So that's one of my diamond art clubs as well. The last two, let me check my list here and make sure these are the last two. No, they're not, okay. Three, three more. Birth of the Teratov Kirin. This is another landscape one, but I just fell in love with this one when I saw it as well with the little kind of unicorn Kirin mom wrapped around the baby. It just, again, there's lots of kind of color blocking in the background. That's not my typical style. I don't usually enjoy that, but I loved the art enough that I went ahead and got that one. So I have Birth of the Teratov Kirin. And I believe that artist has done several more with Diamond Art Club as well. I haven't got any of her other ones, but I really like her art style. I think this is the last two, and these are my newest purchases from Diamond Art Club. So first newest purchase, and this is one that I bought when I bought the Jetsons because I've already finished the Jetsons. This one is called Little Baker, and I just liked all the pink. Pink is the thing with me. I've gotten off flamingos, but now I'm on to pink, <laughs> or I'm still with pink, but not flamingos. And again, this is one of those kind of vignette ones. This one is big, so don't know when I'll get around to it, but she's definitely gonna make the trek to Canada with this. And then my last Diamond Art Club that I haven't talked about is my latest purchase, and that is called Mesmerizing Secret. Now, I have to confess, I do really like the art in this one, but I also purchased this one because it's supposed to have a lot of their different kinds of drills and I've not tried all of their different kinds of drills. I don't know if this, I don't think this one has any of the electro drills. So I'm still curious about those, but this one I think has fairy dust, ABs and the iridescent drills in it. And I just thought it was a really interesting piece of art. I like kind of the color scheme of it and yeah, it just looked really fun. So. So that is my last Diamond Art Club. So for those of you who are keeping track, that's 34 Diamond Art Clubs. That puts me at 91 total for my stash. Now, one of my goals at the beginning of the year was to increase my stash. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that goal for the end of the year. The reason I don't know if I'm gonna keep that as a goal for the rest of the year is kind of twofold. I wanted at the beginning of the year, the goal was to increase my stash because I knew we were gonna be moving and everyone was telling me that it would be way more expensive to buy the kits in Canada. Not that they're wrong, but in looking at my stash and kind of going through everything and also just kind of working through all of my older kits, I'm looking at my pile and going, okay, how long is it gonna take me to do all the kits that I already own? My stash is not as big as some people's, but it is much bigger than others. People have different situations. I've said before many times that where I'm not, nobody in my household is going without to feed an obsession. We have plenty of money for me to spend on diamond paintings. Looking at it, like I said, how old am I gonna be before I finish all the kits I already own? <laughs> While I don't think I'm going to be giving up diamond painting, for the short term at least, there may, may very well be things that take some of my focus. And so I won't have as much time to diamond paint as I would like. Certainly an international move is going to take up some of my time. And I would like to think that I can work far enough ahead and be organized enough that it won't be too disruptive. I mean, we won't be moving forever but it does take time and energy, and that's time and energy that I won't have to devote to other things like diamond painting. 
And like I said, having looked at my stash and thought, literally, how long will it take me to complete all of these diamond paintings? Now, I don't really know the answer to that because it's really hard to figure out how long a diamond painting will take you. It depends on the amount of confetti. It depends on the amount of color blocking. It depends on how I'm feeling about it, if I'm enjoying it, if I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, I'm just kind of reevaluating what I want to do. I mean, I have been increasing my stash so far this year, sometimes not even intentionally. I mean, I really, the last couple of purchases from Diamond Art Club, I try, like I said, to not really pay much attention to the new releases simply for the fact that I didn't want to spend a bunch of money kind of buying things when I already have a lot. But there's always something cute, right? Like these little mini kits here. So my stash is currently setting at 91. I have no plans to buy any kits during the month of July. That doesn't mean that I won't. Things could change, new releases come out, especially if Oraloa comes out with a winter one to complete my little series there, that might be something that I get. I really need to, to think about if I want to increase my stash. I've been watching a lot of other people do the great stash down and kind of trying to think where, where am I comfortable with my stash? Me personally, my husband does not care. I could own three times as many and as long as I was happy, my husband would be happy. And now that both of my kids have graduated from college and we no longer have to worry about paying tuition, we will have more disposable income. So in theory, I could buy more, but I'm the only person doing the diamond paintings. I just need to think about what I wanna do. That's where I'm at. Feel free to leave me a comment below. Let me know how big your stash is or isn't. If you don't have a stash, don't feel bad. There's nothing wrong with that. If you have a big stash, as long as you're enjoying it, I wouldn't feel bad about that either. If you are trying to decrease your stash, I'd love to know that. If you're trying to increase your stash, I'd love to know that too. Just to kind of get a feel where people are at and how everybody is feeling about their stashes. I mean, I've thoroughly enjoyed all of the diamond paintings that I've done with a couple of exceptions. I I've enjoyed the process on all of them. There have been several that the drills have not been great, that have been kind of frustrating. So for that reason, but I mean, I still get... I still enjoy the process of putting the drills on the canvas. It's very meditative, therapeutic, calming for me. Maybe that's why I feel like I need to have a stash. I don't know. So that's where I'm sitting with my stash. My original goal at the beginning of the year, like I said, was to increase it in preparation for our move. Now that our move is feeling much more imminent, I think I have enough. I don't, I don't know how much more I want to have to pack away <laughs> and take with us, even knowing that it may cost me a bit more once we're across the border. It just, it is what it is. There's probably lots of other things that may cost me more that way too. So I know this wasn't my kind of typical stash video, but like I said, everything is kind of packed away and I didn't want to dig through all the boxes just to get everything out and put it on the dining room table. So let me know what you thought of the new format as well. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.